Today we're going to talk about equations of lines. Anytime we talk about equations of lines, we start with slope. So if we remember the equation for slope, first of all, the symbol is m. The general idea is rise over one, run. We need to remember to subtract our y's in the numerator and our x's in the denominator. Slopes of vertical and horizontal lines are a little bit special, so those we need to remember. A vertical line goes up and down, and it has an undefined slope. A horizontal line is the one that goes side to side, and it has a slope of zero. Okay, I will tell you, for me, for whatever reason, my brain cannot remember undefined and zero. Here's how I remember it. This is stupid, but someone showed it to me years ago, and it's always stuck in my brain. If you picture slope like a face, a positive slope rises, a negative slope falls. So those should make sense. A vertical line has an undefined slope, and a horizontal line has a slope of zero. It's stupid. I know. I know. But every time I think of vertical line, I think of, okay, it's the nose and it's undefined slope. It sticks in my brain. So if you like it, great. If you don't like it, forget I showed that to you. Okay. So example one, we're finding slope. We have each point, which is x comma y and x comma y. It does not matter the order that you subtract as long as you are consistent. So if I'm subtracting the y's, I can do 4 minus negative 2. Or I can do negative 2 minus 4. But in the denominator, then, I need to be consistent. When I subtract my x's, if I started with 4 for y, I have to start with negative 3 for x. So that gives me negative 3 minus 1. On the other hand, if I started with negative 2 for y, then I have to start with 1. So I get 1 minus negative 3. And these will simplify to the same number. On the left side, 4 minus negative 2 gives us 6. Negative 3 subtract 1 gives us negative 4, which simplifies to 3 over negative 2. If we simplified the other fraction, we would get the same number. So that's the first one. Second one, if I'm doing slope, I'm going to do y minus y, so 7 minus negative 10. x minus x, so 3 minus 3. That gives me 17 over 0. If 0 is in the denominator, is our answer undefined or 0? Undefined. Undefined. If you can't remember that, divide it out on your calculator. If you do 17 divided by 0, you're going to get an error message. That means the answer is undefined. Rachel? Um, also, like, the perfect example. Okay, cool. If you like that, zeros on top, yeah. you can see okay. And then if it's zero, if the zeros on the bottom, just it's like no, you can't do it because zeros on the bottom. Okay, I've never heard that before. Thank you for sharing. <coughs> That's slope. I just came up with it. It's like my silly face. Uh, do we remember slope? That all seems pretty familiar. Yeah. Hopefully. Great. What we're going to do with this is we are going to write equations of lines. First thing I want to tell you, there are three different forms of lines. <coughs> slope, intercept, standard, and point slope. Bless you. For our purposes, we are not going to need standard form. So don't even bother to remember that. Okay. For slope, intercept, you need the slope which is m, and you need the y-intercept, which is b. I need us to remember that b is the y-intercept, which is the point 0, comma y. It's not any intercept. It's specifically the y-intercept. Okay, point slope form, on the other hand, has the slope, and it has any point x1, y1. So slope intercept y equals mx plus b is the first equation that you all learn for lines, and you tend to really like it. It's not that useful, though. You can only use it when you have the y-intercept. Most of the time, you don't. Point slope form, 
uh, is going to be particularly helpful because it can be used for any point. The two equations on the right are special ones that you need to remember. Don't memorize this, though. You should be able to figure it out. If we're talking about a vertical line, on our xy plane, we have a vertical line. Here's all you need to know. That vertical line goes through the x-axis, and hence our equation is x equals. Horizontal line, on the other hand, goes through the y-axis, hence it's going to be y equals. Yep? What do we, like, need to know to do with these equations? Like, do you give us... A graph and you have to find you're going to be give, you're not going to be given a graph you're going to be given other pieces of information so we'll do some examples uh, we'll, where okay. you'll see the various kinds you could right. experience okay we have one other thing to review before we do our examples next thing to review is the difference between parallel and perpendicular lines parallel lines have the same slope parallel lines have the same slope what does it mean for lines to be parallel? They don't intersect. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. For example, 3 and negative 1 third. Those are perpendicular. They're reciprocal, so they flip, and then they're opposite signs. What does it mean to be perpendicular? They intersect in a very good. Perpendicular lines form a right angle or a 90 degree angle. Okay, so we are going to do five examples. We'll take our break and then we'll come back. These are all different examples of writing equations of lines. Find the equation of the line that satisfies the following conditions. Okay, I will tell you, I don't care what form you use. Pick the one that makes the most sense. So we already said standard form you're not going to use. You're either going to use y equals mx plus b, or you're going to use point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is the order I go in. If I use slope intercept form, if I can, that's the one that I use. If not, I do point slope. So example A, a slope of 3 fifths and passing through 0, negative 8. 3 fifths is our slope of M. 0, negative 8 is the y-intercept, which means that B is negative 8. So I can use slope-intercept form, and my line is y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 8. And that's it. B, a vertical line through negative 2, 5. Anytime I do vertical and horizontal, I draw myself a picture because it helps me come up with the equation rather than memorizing something. The point negative 2, 5 is about here. A vertical line goes here. So what we care about is that this line goes through the x-axis. So our equation then will be x equals some number. It's the x from the point we have. x equals negative 2. As we move up and down the line, every point has an x value of negative 2. Every point has an x value of negative 2. Y is what's changing. Questions before I keep going? Okay, for C, passing through negative 2, 4 and 2, negative 1. Both forms that we have above of a line require slope. So no matter what we're writing the equation of, we need slope. So I'm going to start by finding the slope between these two points. Y minus Y, so 4 minus negative 1. And then negative 2 minus 2. In the numerator, I get a positive 5. In the denominator, I get a negative 4. So then I have to ask myself, can I use slope-intercept form? No, because I don't have the y-intercept. So I'm going to have to use point-slope, the second form, with either point. So if I choose to use this first point, 
I'm going to get y minus 4 is equal to 5 over negative 4, x minus negative 2. I do want the x minus negative 2 simplified, and it becomes x plus 2. Leave your answer like that. Don't put it in a slope-intercept form. There's no reason to. Just leave your answer like that. And again, you could have used the second point instead. I just chose not to. Is this familiar to us? Yeah. yeah. Okay, two more. D, we need to write the equation of the line that is parallel to 2x minus 3y equals 7, but that passes through negative 6, negative 2. Okay, so we know that parallel lines have the same slope. So we're going to have to start by figuring out what the slope of the line that we have is. So we get 2x minus 3y equals 7. This time I am going to put it into slope intercept, y equals mx plus b, so that I can very clearly see the slope. If I move over 2x, I get negative 3y is equal to 7 minus 2x. If I divide by negative 3 then, I get y is equal to 7 over negative 3. And negative 2 divided by negative 3 gives us a positive 2 thirds. So the slope is always the number in front of the x. So the slope of this line is 2 thirds, which means the slope of the parallel line is also 2 thirds. That's what this little symbol means, is parallel. So we are writing the equation of the line that has a slope of 2 thirds and that passes through negative 6, negative 2. That's not the y-intercept, so we're going to have to use the second form or point-slope form. We get y minus negative 2 is equal to 2 thirds x minus negative 6, which gives us y plus 2 is equal to 2 thirds x plus 6. Last one is E. We're writing the equation of the line that is perpendicular to 2x minus 3y equals 7, and that passes through negative 6, negative 2. So first of all, do you notice it's pretty much the exact same question except parallel versus perpendicular? Yeah. Same line, same point. Okay, so we still need to know the slope of this line. So we would solve for y, which we already did in the previous one, and we got 7 over negative 3 plus two-thirds x. Again, our slope of this line is two-thirds, which means our perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal. So we flip it to become three-halves, and we change the sign. So writing the equation of the line with a slope of negative three over two, and that passes through negative 6, negative 2. We get y plus 2 is equal to negative 3 over 2 x add 6. And that's our equation. Questions for me on equations of lines? Yeah. 